Hey there! Buildings are part of specific urban areas, places and neighborhoods with their own unique DNA. When you want to understand the possibilities and limitations of building adaptation, you must analyze the area very well. Let's find out more about functions and stakeholders. This is an example of an urban redevelopment project called South Lake Union in Seattle. In this former warehouse district, a lot of unique heritage buildings have been preserved and adapted by single developers. One developer, Vulcan Real Estate, has also realized several new offices and apartments on plots. Moreover, the municipality, together with developers, local community, property owners, tenants and public transport companies, initiated a streetcar project to make the area more accessible. Consider all the people that live, work and visit the area and all the wishes they have. Taking all of this into account when initiating a building adaptation can turn into a complex ball of spaghetti. Let's look more closely at urban redevelopments, which occur in every country around the world. Urban redevelopment typically takes place at formal industrial sites, waterfront locations or transportation hubs. These areas often contain obsolescent buildings that can be adapted to new use. Redeveloping these brownfield locations within the city, of course, is much more sustainable than developing green fields at the fringe of cities. Then we don't need to intervene in the natural environment by adding buildings and infrastructure. So combining urban redevelopment and building adaptation can really be a success story. When looking at urban areas, we focus on an intermediate level between cities and buildings. Urban areas have various physical characteristics. First, it contains buildings and the plots they stand on. Second, it involves infrastructure such as roads and railways. And third, it involves public space like parks and squares. The combination of these locational functions can be very characteristic and unique for an urban area. These location characteristics also constrain the possibilities for adapting buildings. For instance, a busy highway very close to a building might limit the adaptation of buildings towards apartments. You can imagine that restrictions are formulated in planning and environmental law that forbid that people live close to noisy and polluting roads. Nevertheless, site conditions also offer opportunities for building adaptation. Think about what it means for shop owners if an area is well accessible by public transport. This potentially allows more people to visit the area and spend some money. So what do we need to do if we want to investigate the functional possibilities and limitations for a building adaptation initiative? We can apply a SWOT analysis tool to the location in which the building stands. With a SWOT analysis, we can identify the strengths and weaknesses of the building itself and the opportunities and threats of the surrounding urban area. Strengths and opportunities can be helpful and weaknesses and threats can be harmful for adapting buildings. You can include as many functional and physical characteristics of the building and its location in the SWOT as you want to. Then, there is another aspect that might influence the decision to start a building adaptation initiative. Stakeholders. Stakeholders can be individuals, groups of persons, and organizations that have a stake in a project. Sometimes stakeholders are also called actors. We can distinguish public, private and civil stakeholders. Let's see what kind of stakeholders can influence building adaptation initiatives and what their particular interests and goals are. Public actors involved in urban redevelopment and building adaptation are normally municipalities. And in municipal organizations, Several departments can have the authority over a specific aspect, such as spatial planning, land development, building permits, etc. Also, national, metropolitan and regional governments can play a role. And what to think of semi-public bodies like public transport companies, water boards, harbour authorities, etc. In essence, what these public stakeholders share is their authority over administrative geographical area. Their goal is to safeguard public interests like maintaining public space, protecting the natural environment and stimulating the economy. There are also many private stakeholders involved in building adaptation. 
Often there are existing office and shop owners in an urban area. Owners can be individual people, but sometimes also institutional investors, which own but do not occupy the building. Their goal is to secure return on investment by increasing property values. Other private actors include developers and housing associations, who redevelop urban areas and buildings with the goal of making a profit. Later in the construction process, contractors and suppliers play a role, but their role is limited in the initiative phase. Then, civil stakeholders involved in building adaptations can be divided into two main groups. On the one hand, we have existing people in an urban area like local communities, homeowners and user tenants of offices and shops. Their main interest lies in protecting but also contributing to their own direct environment. On the other hand, we have civilians and societal organizations from outside the area. They might influence decision making. For instance, neighbors living close to an urban area can oppose to plans for a high-rise tower that might block the sun in their garden. These civil actors want to protect their own interests and should be dealt with carefully and consulted when needed. Well, now that we have covered all a lot of different stakeholders, how can we make sense of it? This can be done by a stakeholder analysis. There are many possibilities to map the different stakeholders involved and this particular mapping tool could be of help to you. It shows the three main groups of stakeholders and an inner and outer ring. In the outer ring, you can position stakeholders that have a minor influence. In the inner ring, you can map stakeholders that have a big influence on your initiative. By positioning the actors in the public, private or civil group and listing their goals, interests and resources, you end up with a good overview of who to involve and bear in mind when initiating a building project. I think we covered a lot in this video. The main functional features of urban redevelopment have been discussed and we introduced handy tools like the SWOT analysis and the stakeholder analysis. These tools can help you to analyze the urban area's functions and stakeholders of importance to building adaptation.